from the city to rural North America, this is Rural America Live, connecting the people who grow America's food and fiber with those who enjoy it. Call in, let's talk. It's Rural America Live. For more than a century, a company called Kloss has focused on harvesting excellence in fields throughout the world, literally. And while the company's strong engineering roots are in Germany, we'll learn about that, its branches have spread around the world. Tonight, Kloss will introduce us to their line of balers and hay tools needed for efficient and productive farm management. It's that time of year. Good evening and welcome to Rural America Live. I'm Mark Oppold, and again, we do welcome our friends from Kloss back to our RFD TV studios. In fact, let me introduce two gentlemen joining me for the next hour. First to my left is Matt James. Matt is Kloss product coordinator, and David Friedersdorf from the uh, state of Wisconsin. We're going to find, or from Indiana. He's a Baylor and Hay Tools business unit manager. Welcome to Rural America Live. Thank you. Thank you. I, I, I missed, missed you guys. Or it's switched you around. We're going to hear all about these great pieces of equipment, but let's find out about your backgrounds first. And Matt, you are from the great state of Wisconsin. I am from the great <laughs> state of Wisconsin and great basketball. So yeah. uh, I grew up on a small dairy farm in Wisconsin, and I've been working for Kloss now for 12 years in our product department. Very good. And family farm uh, still maintains itself. <clears throat> your dad, uh, you told me, was involved still in agriculture very much. Yeah, my dad is a farm manager at Western Kentucky University, where he's got a lot of Kloss equipment. Uh, but, yeah, that's so. Good to have you here. David, uh, good to have you here as well, and proud to be a Hoosier. Uh, Becky, our producer, uh, always loves to meet those from Indiana. So are you. Yes, it's Proud to be from Indiana. Purdue fan, though. Yeah, See, I understand that. Talking basketball here, so <laughs> certainly happy to be here. I spent my first 25 years uh, farming, so yeah. it, uh, my background led into this position and working with Kloss quite well and been with Kloss now 18 years. Yeah, it kind of gives you that dual, I mean, you really have a connection. You've been there and, and know exactly what, what they're needing out there in the field, especially when talking about hay equipment. And the farm still in the family there in Indiana? Uh, yes. Very we're good. still still have an active farm, and uh, yes, it makes it nice to be able to to walk and talk. With Absolutely, the guys and yeah, talk, and see you know. it see it in action. Yes. Tell us a little bit about the company, uh, if you would, Dave. We kind of start there. You got a rich history. We we, we do. Kloss is uh, the fifth largest agricultural equipment manufacturer in the world. Mm -hmm. uh, quite proud of that position. Sure, we've been around for 102 years. Uh, still family owned. Uh, when you look at a company that size and family owned and knowing that we only produce harvesting equipment and tractors. It's uh, quite a thing. And we mentioned in the open that uh, obviously heavy roots coming originally from Germany. Yes, uh, we're headquartered in, in Germany. Uh, we have daughter companies, uh, distributors, and uh, certainly factories throughout the world. Here in North America, our headquarters are in Omaha, Nebraska. Very good. How did it all start? If you can kind of give us a quick look back in history. Uh, as you say, it's still a family business. It is a family business. The founder, uh, August Kloss, was the original founder in 1913. Mm -hmm. uh, started out with straw binders. Uh, that was what they manufactured to start with. Wow. And um, was awarded a patent on a uh, the bill hook uh, tie knotter for tying those, yes. which revolutionized the uh, straw binder it, business it back really then. It really did. So uh, from that point forward, the um, uh, we, we look at just minor changes in that bill hook design that is still used in our square balers today. Boy, great video there. We were able to, to uh, yeah, that's kind of a, uh, that's a really important point that you, you haven't gone away from some of those major innovations that were, that are 100 years old, David. That, that's true. That's true. So when you look at uh, coming across uh, to the United States, so tell us a little bit about how that happened. It, it was interesting. Uh, Kloss first started bringing their combines into the North American market. Uh, they were Kloss combines painted blue started in night for the Ford Motor Company, uh -huh. Ford uh, Agricultural Equipment yeah. Company at yeah. that time. Yeah. Uh, that lasted from 1965 through 79. Uh, at, in uh, 1979, Kloss of America was uh, originated. Uh, there was a, a factory built in Columbus, Indiana, and that became our headquarters there for assembly of combines. Then in uh, the mid 80s, uh, we introduced balers and hay tools, which is uh, certainly a big part of our business Absolutely, now. Absolutely, yeah. Then uh, we also uh, were joined with another manufacturer, Massey Ferguson, in 89 through 93. There were two models of combines, again, Kloss combines painted red, that were uh, 
actually marketed through Massey Ferguson. Yeah, interesting history there, exactly. So that was 30 years ago, roughly, for the, a lot of that history that you mm -hmm. talk, just talked about. So uh, what the company certainly has been uh, moving forward uh, since then. Well, <clears throat> we like to think so, certainly. <laughs> we, uh, since that time, we've sold thousands of uh, pieces of harvesting equipment, uh, certainly throughout the North American market, throughout the world, but throughout uh, North America, sure. especially... Um, looking at, at the combines and, and balers and hay tools up until 94. In 1994, we uh, introduced a very important product to our line, that was the Jaguar uh, self-propelled forage harvester. Uh, and of course, that self-propelled forage harvester is still the leading forage harvester, self-propelled forage harvester in the world. Mm. Uh, we also are proud to say that we're the leader, lead marketer of uh, class one round balers. In North America as well. And in 2001, they opened uh, the combine facility uh, in Omaha. Is that correct? As we kind of moved to the present day, uh, in 2002, moved the headquarters to Omaha. Yes, all, all that was moved from Columbus uh, to Omaha for the corporate headquarters. Uh, that also freed up the buildings there, building at Columbus to become the North American headquarters for parts distribution. Mm -hmm. And so that is still our main parts distribution area uh, uh, facility. Yeah. Uh, just last month, we celebrated the uh, grand opening of an addition there, which kicked us up over 179,000 square feet of uh, uh, certainly state-of-the-art parts distribution, and uh, we're very proud of that facility there. And, you know, we uh, remind our viewers and listeners tonight, you are very familiar with Alexion Combines. You see them at the farm shows, and we've had them on the air. We'll be back later this year talking about combines. But, again, we want to focus tonight on your great line of uh, hay tools. In fact, Matt, we're going to put you to work here right now. So, David, you can take a break here for a few <laughs> minutes uh, because you've got a lot to talk about here, uh, Matt. Spend some time talking about the different lines you have of the balers and the hay tools. Yeah, so we have um, our disco line, which is our disc mowers. It can be a disc mower with three-point hitch or more conditioner. We have our Volto tether lineup. We have our liner rakes, which are rotary rakes. We have our round bale baler lineup with variant variable chamber balers or fixed chamber balers. And then we have a great square baler lineup. And we're going to talk about those in detail one at a time. Got some great video here to help. You and I uh, share that with our viewers. At Klaus is well known for the German engineering, which uh, David uh, talked about earlier here too. What kind of design innovations are we talking about here that they're responsible for now? As David alluded to, with uh, the first patent at Klaus was the bill hook, and really that bill hook is the same thing we use on our Quadrant 3300 today. Wow! Um, you know, as Klaus is the only manufacturer in North America that makes its own knotter for its square baler. Um, some other key features too is we have our net wrap system. Was we were the first in the industry with net wrap on a round baler, and as you look out across this great country now, 90% of the balers have net wrap on them. Yeah, rotocut round balers. You know, we were the first to come in, and rotocut is really important for the silage baling process or even dry hay to eliminate the waste of the crop. Okay. And with all those innovations, you know, as in 2015, we introduced 19 new products to the Kloss lineup. Wow. And we aren't going to be able to talk about all those, but you mentioned the harvest chain here. Let's go, we start where the farmers start, and that's with that uh, initial cut, man. Let's talk about that disco line of mowers, and you have quite a selection there. We have a huge selection yeah. of disco mowers. To start off with, we've got uh, three-point mounted disc mowers with no conditioner. They can come in a, with a spring flotation or hydraulic flotation with a working width of eight foot six all the way up to 12 and a half feet. Then we have pull type mowers with a side pole that can come in tine or roller that's nine foot ten. And then we also have center pivot mowers that are 11 foot two and 12 and a half foot, which are all hydraulic floating as well. And then uh, kind of unique in the industry now with with having front mowers, we can put a 9 foot 10 or 11 foot 2 front mower on the front with no conditioner, tying, or roller. And then what is really uh, kicking off really strong in North America is the triple mowers. So we can mow up nearly up to 30 feet in one pass and it lays out three swaths. It can come in no conditioner, tying conditioner, 
roller conditioner or tying with a merger that puts all the crop into one swap. You got, we're gonna, that's a lot of information right there. I mean, we're just getting a good start here tonight, uh, viewers and uh, listeners, but uh, they, you have a website, it is kloss.com, that they can go to to learn all about what we're gonna talk about tonight. And we'll be taking your calls a bit later as well, but kloss.com is a great piece of information, uh, a source. So write that down and keep it handy, even well after our program is over. You have a new, uh, a new product called the Max Cut that I was interested in hearing about during our earlier meeting. Talk about that if you would. So we have a new cutter bar out for 2015 that's in pretty much our entire lineup. Uh, with this cutter bar, it's the thickest gears in the industry. It's an inline cutter bar with satellite and idler gears. So with the big idler gears, it makes the cutter bar run quieter, less horsepower. With the big gears, of course, it's structurally more strong. We also, with the cutter bar, um, have the biggest stamping device in Europe stamp out the cutter bar, which gives us that really strong rigidity. And in this animation, it's showing that little notch on the uh, where the knife goes by, and that mm -hmm. notch helps um, for better cut quality as well in the fine, thinner stem crops. And so uh, the uh, the technology just continues to evolve in these. Yeah, it's it's, hu it's great, even with this new cutter bar as well. That it's a lifetime oil change, so you're not having to change the oil uh, every season. Um, the 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 Discs are never can collide if they ever hit hit each other if uh, we break the safety link. Mm -hmm. So if we talk about safety link, that's where the shaft that goes from the disc down to the idler gear um, can break if it hits a big rock, fence post, whatever you know you can find out in a hay field. And by there's a bolt that goes up through the center that retains the disc to the cutter bar. So all you have to do is simply shut off your machine get your new safety link off, and as the animation shows, it comes right out, and you just pop the new one right back in, and the way you're going in less than 10 minutes. Less than 10 minutes, wow. And that's the cutter bar, the cutter bar protection that yep. we talked about earlier, that we're just seeing there? Yep. Uh, so you also have then, uh, and that mean, it means a clean, you, you mentioned this too, and I wrote it down, uh, a, a, a field that's cut cleaner than what other producers might be seeing with their current equipment, is that mm -hmm. right? Yep. Um, with that new cutter bar too, because of the great overlap, it just really keeps everything nice and clean. And with the debris channels, yeah. as we see in this animation, uh, we notch out the area between the discs so the soil can go between. That's it. Because as you know, people don't plant hay in, in good cornfields, nice flat ground. It's yeah. always got <laughs> mole hills, badger hills, coyote mounds, you, know, you name it. Yeah. So the soil can go between so the cutter bar doesn't push the soil in front. Uh, that keeps so by not having that dirt pushing in front, it uh, keeps the knives engaged in cutting in the crop versus skipping, and then later on seeing that some customers call flags of standing alfalfa or grass stems out in the field later yeah. on. And David, I, that you you're nodding your head uh, about the you know nobody has a. a completely level field of alpha no, or whatever it might be or clover and so this is something that maybe producers have said something to you about and Klaus has answered. It is nice when we get out there because I get to travel all of North America and it's uh, nice to hear all the good compliments about how our cutter bar, cutter bar floats, how our cutter bar follows the contour yeah. and uh, certainly does a smooth job and I think Matt alluded to the fact that you know that we don't have a bunch of flags standing up in the field when we go through and cut it. Yeah. The other thing that really impressed me and I wanted to talk about, when because I remember my dad fixing the knives, you know, and there's a, there's a quick change, quick knife change with your equipment. Let's talk about that. Yep, as we see in the animation here, that uh, orange lever there, all we got to do is push down on a leaf spring and the knife and that comes down and you can pull that knife right out. So it's really nice. You don't have to torque a bolt. You don't skin your knuckles up trying to get that that nut tight, um, it's a really good quick system. Don't need any nice. wrench at all then? No wrench, it just, the lever just sits on the mower in its little holder spot. You can quickly get out if you hit a rock or bend the knife, um, just to change it out quickly. What's the, I imagine you're getting a lot of, is that a fairly new innovation? Or has um, that been available for a while? Quick knife has been out for us for six, seven years yeah. now. It's, okay. Um, but it's, it's a great innovation because it's very safe, it's really yeah. quick. Um, and it's easy, really easy to change.
And if you want to talk about that again, then we open our phone lines later. One of the things many you may want to ask Matt and David about, and we're going to be doing that here later this hour, we have you an opportunity to visit and ask questions as well. What about uh, what you call active float change? What do you mean by that? That's unique to Kloss. Um, on most of our mower lineups, we can have what we call hydraulic flotation. And as you'll see in the animation, instead of using springs to float our mower over the ground, <coughs> we use hydraulic cylinders yeah. with accumulators, as you see in the animation right now. With those accumulators, it allows that mower to float up and down further, whereas a spring will limit your down travel. So with that flotation, it allows us to have truly a four-dimensional flotation because we can float side to side. And here, a unique feature of rocking back and forth so wow. we don't scallop into the ground. And then being able to simply lift up and down. So it really shows how we can float in any kind of direction over the ground. You mentioned something about horsepower too, uh, less horsepower, am I right in that? Yep, so it takes 16% uh, less horsepower over a spring, and it also puts less soil or what the nutritionists would call ash content in the crop because it truly can float over like we talked about them badger holes and, yeah. and gopher mounds. Gopher mounds, holes, gopher mounds, whatever it might be. Fire ant hills in the south. <laughs> yes. yeah. yeah, you've heard it all. And David, back to you a little bit real quick. Just I want to know from, from your standpoint, you, you hear these things and we've seen them and, and about customer reaction. Well, farmers and, and uh, ranchers are demanding higher and higher capacities and they, of course, are going into higher and higher speeds. And yeah. with this capability, the, the mower floats over the over the ground and we don't uh, experience some of the issues that we've seen some other occasions uh, of, of runovers on mowers and extreme scalping. So mm -hmm. there, again, another product that has uh, been uh, thought out, engineered, and uh, meeting the demands of the of the modern day farmer and rancher. Okay, uh, Matt, great job there. And again, uh, if callers have some ideas or questions later, we can answer those. But let's move on. Once Okay, so once the crop is cut, uh, it needs to be raked. Mm -hmm. and uh, sometimes it needs to be dried, and that brings up tethers, which you called an uh, uh, insurance policy. Tell us what you meant by that. Well, I call it an insurance policy because, you know, with a tether, we, with tethers, they go out and they spread the crop out, out, of, the, out of the windrow. And if the crop got rained on, um, you can go out there after the rain, after the ground's dried up a little bit to spread the crop. It's just a great way to save that crop. As we saw, like in Nebraska last year, a lot of guys put up a lot of black alfalfa, because they didn't have a way to go out and fluff up that crop after the rains and it would just rain, you know, every three days. Guys here in the in the south or in the east understand rain more and more have tetters. Mm -hmm. So maybe back up a half step and talk about what a tether is and, and, and what it does. We're, we're seeing some, some animation there, but maybe just a quick 101 on, on tethers. Yeah, so a tether, all it's supposed to do is with the tines is pick up the crop and, and kind of lay it out, fluff it out, as we see here in the animation. Um, you, shouldn't have, you should not rip the leaves on the crop. It uh, should protect the leaves. You run RPM just enough to spread it out and do a nice spread pattern. Mm -hmm. We have a customer on the line that uh, we've has, asked to call in. This is uh, Todd from the state of Washington. Todd, are you with us? Yeah, I sure am. Thanks for calling tonight. Uh, before we start, thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks for calling in and talk. Uh, maybe give our viewers a little bit of information about what kind of operation you have in in Washington State. Uh, we run uh, a lot of different crops. So we're triticale, sedan grass, uh, hay, uh, corn silage, and a little bit of wheat litch and even some ear litch there at the last mm -hmm. uh, of the year. So we run a lot of different multiple crops through our uh, custom harvest, forage harvesting. So you're a custom, so, and you obviously a long time uh, Kloss customer. Talk about the equipment you have there on the farm. Oh, we got a range of uh, some new, a couple 90s uh, with the corn head and pickup heads. So we run some older ones with the 900 and 880. And those machines during the summertime, we uh, hook on the Disco uh, 8700C that has uh, about three wind rows at once, about uh, roughly around 30 foot. And uh, we run two rakes, 3,000 cloth rakes, and also with a uh, uh, 1050 uh, cloth tether. 
We're going to talk about rakes coming up here in a little bit there. What, but uh, kind of generally, what do, you, what do you like most, if you could boil it down to one or two points, what you really like about the, uh, the Kloss product? Uh, consistency. Uh, it holds together. It's dependable, uh, long-lasting. Um, you know, there's always uh, uh, problems that we all have, but uh, this is a machine that uh, we definitely are in the field and not working in the shop. So that means a lot to us to uh, keep things moving. I, uh, it means a lot to anybody watching, any farmer, though, that it, time in the shop is time they don't want to need. I have Matt today's with us here. Matt, you had a question maybe for uh, Todd? Yeah, Todd. So um, what are you doing with your tether out there in Washington? What we use our tether is uh, kind of a backup, like to, if the weather is going to change on us or uh, we're running into wet moisture because what we're trying to do is put up the top quality feed and the most consistent feed, meaning we want uh, moistures at a consistent basis, somewhere around 65 to 68 percent. And so what we do is uh, when we're running to some wet moistures, we don't try to sit there and wait with our operators and wait for the uh, windrow to dry down. We'll jump on the tether go out there and get uh, that product dry at the correct moisture, what we want to see at. And uh, at the end result, uh, the client is uh, getting uh, what they want at the moisture and uh, quality feed as they can get. Todd, thanks for joining us tonight. We wish we could talk longer with you, but we really appreciate, uh, appreciate you calling in and sharing a few minutes with us and hope you have a successful season coming up here. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you, thanks, Todd. Todd. Thanks to you. Todd from Washington uh, State giving us a call. We have some other uh, customers who uh, are, would like to uh, share some thoughts, and we'll have those for you as we work through this hour. Uh, back with the tethers, and, and what's really the value, would you say, to people who maybe aren't as familiar as people like Todd are? So with the tethers, you know, we have a huge lineup of tethers. We have our four-basket 17-foot uh, tether all the way up to a 43-foot uh, tether. So we have a wider range for, for each size of farmer. Mm -hmm. But uh, the, big, the big thing is our longevity and durability. And as like Todd mentions, is, is staying out of the shop. You know, our tethers, yeah. our tethers are really heavy built. As you see in this animation, heavy duty gearbox with uh, the framing is really thick walled framing. So it really holds together for a long time. And then we would talk about our permalink system. Yeah. As you see in the permalink, it's a finger and a sprocket. So that no matter what kind of angle, we can power, send our power through the shaft to the next rotor. So it's very reliable. And with the permalink fingers, they're also flat. So they don't ever get wear spots in them. Because if you have round fingers, they just wear and you'll have more maintenance further on. One of the innovations that really makes the Kloss line unique, that's a, that's a good starting point. What about, you said, You also mentioned the uh, tine angle adjustment. Yeah, so at Kloss, we really understand alfalfa. And uh, with tethers, a lot of people have this conception that a tether is a leaf beater. And with our tine angle, um, with this picture we show here, we can actually set with the bolt, and you'll see this eccentric piece that the arrow's pointing to, the angle 70 degrees more forward. And by doing that, we can then in alfalfa reduce our PTO speed from 540 RPM all the way down to 300 RPM. So it just barely picks up the alfalfa stem and just fluffs it out there. It's not beating all the leaves off because mm -hmm. the tether should not be a leaf beater. Before we go to break, one last thing. You called it a max spread. Uh, that's new technology. I know that's coming up here uh, that we want to talk about too. Yep. So with max spread is our new innovation on all of our tether lineup is the tine arm is bent back at an angle at 29 and a half degrees. So it puts more even load on our tines. You know, with Kloss, we have the, the strongest tine in the industry with five wraps and very thick tine. But we further enhance that by bending that tine arm back at 29 and a half degrees. So it puts equal load on the front and back tine. And as you'll also see there, both tines are equal length. And with <coughs> equal length tines, that gives us, puts 25% less ash in the crop. And that was a study done by the DLG in Germany, mm. which is the tractor um, test equivalent in Europe. So it really proved by having equal length tines, uh, less soil in the crop, 
And also for a customer, it only means having to stock one part number of tine for a whole tether. Wow. Lots we've ground that we've covered so far. Uh, good job, Matt. We have Thank lots you. more to go. We, in fact, we're going to take a short break here now. When we come back, we'll be talking about rakes and balers with our friends from Kloss. So stay with us. More coming up. Rural America Live continues right after this. And welcome back to Rural America Live, our friends from Kloss. I'm Mark Oppel. Joining me tonight, Matt Janes, Kloss Product Coordinator, and David Friesendorf, Baylor and Hay Tool Business Unit Manager. Did I say that right that time? Close enough. You're fine. Frieders, Friedersdorf. <laughs> it's fine. Well, Oppel, you know, I get the same thing you do, but only you're probably a little bit extended from that, you know, but we're both German. Right? Just, mm -hmm. hey, you, fine. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to open our phone lines here to take uh, calls from our uh, viewers. If you'd like to join us, 877-731-6733. Right now, 877-731-6733. And we talked about, uh, not that the crop has dried down, Matt. We're going to keep you working here. Uh, that come, the rakes come in here now, and a great selection there as well. Let's start by talking about what is, you're going to talk about rotary rakes. What, is, what are they? So at Kloss, um, we have rotary rakes, and a rotary rake is a rotor that uh, the rake arms comes around kind of like a leaf rake, just gently picks up the crop and dumps it into a windrow. And with a rotary rake, your, your windrow is going to be drier more consistently because with a wheel or a bar rake, it ropes it up into a tight rope, and that's how you get wet spots mm -hmm. if you're raking that crop up into the 30% or higher moisture. And with these rotary rakes, it just makes a nice windrow on a forge harvester or a baler, you can increase your capacity just because of the smoothness of the windrow um, and just great formation because at the end of the day when I teach uh, our, our dealers, our sales guys, our service guys and customers, a rake makes the bale. And yeah. That's the statement we hear tonight, rake, the rake makes a bale. If you have a perfect square windrow, you will always make a good bale. And so again, why Kloss rakes? Uh, there's a lot of rakes out there. They may Maybe on the surface look the same, but certainly not. So with Kloss, we have a really w wide selection of rotary rakes. We have the single rotor rakes, and we actually offer four models, with our two top models actually bigger than anyone else in the industry, up to 17 foot. Wow. Then we also offer four side delivery twin rotor basket rakes that go from 19 and a half feet all the way up to 26 and a half feet. We also have a huge selection of center delivery rakes, and those are my favorite because it makes the baler guy a dream bale every time. <laughs> so, and, and those center delivery rakes rake anywhere from 22 feet all the way up to 32 feet. And then we do also have two models of four basket rakes from 41 feet all the way to 49 feet. And the dealer can certainly talk to your customer uh, about what, what they need and really what's going to work for their farm. Somebody maybe like Todd out there in Washington State yeah. with uh, wide areas. Uh, yeah, our, t our dealers are loaded with a product book I make out for them and overlays. They can actually take our rake, lay it over any kind of mower that you have and really give you, tell you what exact rate size you need and the application you want to do it in. Very good. Okay, what's next in the lineup here of rakes you want to talk about? So with the rakes, and you asked why a person should buy a Kloss rotary yeah, rake. Okay. And, and the, the biggest thing is about the rotor gearbox. Kloss has a lubricated closed gearbox. So with when the rollers are rolling in that cam track, they're lubricated. Uh, they're not running in a dry. That that rotor gearbox is really big. The cam track is wide diameter, so it doesn't put as much strain on the end of the tine arm. Also, uh, the smaller rakes run with two bearings, and in the, in the animation showing there was actually running with three bearings on the bigger rotor rakes, so we have a lot of strength. Um, you, you know, you don't, you really want to hold that arm well because we design our rake so you don't have to be inside the gearbox. So, you yeah. know, if, if you put you put the hired man on the rake or you're on the cell phone talking when you should be paying attention <laughs> raking and hit a telephone pole, the fence line. Our rake, instead of breaking something inside the gearbox, we actually specially form part of the rake tube arm so it'll bend. So all you got to do is get off the tractor, go straight in the arm and get back to raking. So it's not a catastrophic failure if you hit something. Wow. I should have had that when I was growing up. I had a <laughs> couple of run-ins doing, not with a cell phone, but uh, uh, a fence, certainly a little fence line. What about ProFix? Uh, that's something I know you wanted to talk about too. Yep. So ProFix tine arms are a 21 spline arm. They slide on really easy and then they lynch, they lynch on with a, a bracket. 
Uh, we don't use winch pins with a drilled out hole because we've learned back in the day that those holes will wobble out and they'll crack the tine arms. So this gives us a lot more longevity to our tine arms. Okay. And we have what, one final, the ground, uh, what you all, ground? Ground following. So yeah. what's unique to Kloss is we understand a field is not flat. Amen. And um, with our wheel spacing, we put our wheels equally around the circumference of our rotor so we can truly ground gauge. Um, we don't put our wheels right in line with the tractor tires because as you go through a hay field, the tractor tires are going to make it a little sink in. Because a rotary rake should not be, I call, a carrot seed preparation tool. The rotary, the tines need to be out of the ground one to two inches, so you're just picking up the crop. Because with a rotary rake, what the great benefit too is, I forgot to talk about on rakes, is rotary rakes don't pick up the thatch. You know, that black stuff you'll see, especially in the south, down in the ground, it'll make a really nice clean hay, uh, really great for horse people as well. Uh, there you go. So another reason perhaps to, for a call in a bit later. David, uh, he's done a great job, hasn't he, to uh, he has. explain everything? <laughs> huh? he, he always does. Yeah. <laughs> it's great. But it's again, good. back to you and, and all this as far as rakes are concerned and uh, customer response. Again, I would think a lot of this uh, new innovations coming from your customers. That's right. We, we do try to listen, and everybody, I'm sure, feels that they listen to the customer, and we, we think we've done that, uh, especially in the last two models, as uh, Matt alluded to, the, uh, the wider single rotor rakes, which uh, as uh, the farmers, again, and ranchers are getting a wider cut, they, they wanted to, with a single rotor rake that uh, now we've provided, mm -hmm. and, they, and we'll give them the same field following uh, and, and the greater capacity. So, okay, now we've got it cut, we've got it windrowed. Uh, Matt, we're gonna put you back to work here. Keep working now, it's time to get that bailed. Uh, this is the fun part, I guess, for me anyway, is uh, the culmination of all this great work, setting it all up, the windrow, keeping it dry. Uh, now we get to bail it. Yep, so with our baler lineup, we offer variable chamber round balers, belt balers. We offer fixed chambered rollant balers, especially for the heavy duty silage. And then we also have three uh, square balers as well from 31 and a half inches by 27 tall to a three by four baler. And those are, you know, I guess we take three different lines here. We're going to talk about individually here. The first, the variant, is that right? Yep. So we're going to talk about our variant baler, the variant being variable chamber. It's a belt baler. It's a four foot wide by five or five and a half feet tall. It's got huge capacity. It's got a feed rotor or roto cut which gives it even more capacity because it directly in line pulls the crop in. The uh, rotor um, can have uh, 14 knives or just the feed rotor. What's very unique to the variant round baler is our belt baler turns the positive way, as we call it at Kloss, um, in the industry. So our hay comes in, follows the rotor around, and then hits the front belt, and then hits the back belt and comes back around. So it really positively feeds in, and that's what gives it that huge capacity. And then also you see in this animation, there's actually two tension arms on this baler. And with that, it gives us even more density. And you'll see too, there's extra springs. So there's three springs, three hydraulic cylinders, and we use pulse width modulated density valve. So from the cab, you can change the density for whatever crop you're in, whether it's straw, alfalfa, ah, dry hay, uh -huh. silage. So you can really fine tune a cloth baler and everything can be done from the cab. And so the technology is it's unbelievable. Huge. It's, yeah, mean, it, it isn't something. You can really fine tune in a round baler with that. All right, what's the next one you want to talk about? So we'll talk about the Roland baler lineup. And as David alluded to, we're the market leader in class one round balers. We offer um, many different models in the four by four range with a feed rotor, a roto cut, um, with 14 knives, with 16 knives, and actually 25 knives. With that, we can also get what we see here in the animation, the UniRap. It's my favorite baler yeah. in our lineup because <laughs> it is an uh, engineering marvel with uh, uh, all, the, all the things that go on. You can actually bail and wrap at the same time. I want to meet so. the guy that put that together, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, is, and tell us about the reaction that you're getting from people when they see that. Yeah, so with the UniRap, it's really reduced the amount of labor because the bale is made. So the, the guys that have a daytime job, you know, they can go out uh, one day, mow, and then the next day they can uh, to bale it up with the uni wrap. So with this animation, we're just showing the crop flow with the hay coming in, 
with our helical rotor. That's unique to Colossus with that helical rotor. It allows um, clumps to go through better. And then also the drop down floor with that animation. So if you had a slug come in, a big tree branch, because as we know, we farm up next to, to tree lines and stuff. Mm -hmm. And then with the bale chamber here with 16 rolls, the hay comes in and it's just rolling around until it gets to the outer edge. And then what's unique to Kloss is with that MPS system on our top line heavy duty balers uh, to help give that little bit of extra bale density at the end. All right, this the uh, we have a caller on the line that's gonna talk to us a little bit about uh, balers as well. This is Greg Bronner from Indiana. Uh, yeah. Greg, welcome to our program tonight. Uh, thank you for having me. You bet. Thanks for joining us and taking the time to uh, to call in and uh, give us a little bit of uh, background your operation in Indiana. Where whereabouts in the in the state are you located? Uh, we're in the southeastern corner of Indiana, just by Madison, Indiana. Okay. Uh, and tell us about the operation there. Uh, we milk uh, 200 milk cows, and we have a, a grain operation as well. That uh, we're farming roughly 2,000 acres, and uh, 250 acres of that is. Alfalfa hay. Okay, so that means you've got some uh, Kloss hay equipment on the farm there, it sounds like. Yeah, we, we sure do. We have uh, the uh, 455 Kloss Unirap, then we have a uh, 13-foot uh, disc mower, and then um, also their uh, twin rake. What do you like about those products? Uh, I mean, just in your own words, uh, why Kloss? Uh, first and foremost, just the durability of them. Uh, they're definitely track-proven and uh, Believe it or not, we were all John Deere from tractors th through our hay equipment uh, four years ago. And then once we got into the Unirap, app, uh, we were so excited with it and pleased with its performance. Um, we then followed that up with getting a rake and then uh, with the uh, disc mower. Any uh, question for, uh, for Greg? Uh, Greg, it's good, good to hear you on there. Uh, what um, You might give us a little bit of indication. You're an organic dairy, and uh, what have you seen in your nutrition uh, when uh, it comes yeah, to bales? You know, with, with the baler, in reference with the nutrition, that's a good question, David. Uh, it's, you know, when we started before we got this Unirap, and, uh, and speaking of which, Mr. Friedersdorf set us up with our first baler. And, uh, it happened four years ago at the National Farm Machinery Show, and uh, we were chopping haylage striving to get five cuttings a year, and it more or less be three cuttings by the time you raise the silo and loader up and try to get hay cut in the right time and, and the dry down, the moisture. Up. So we ended up switching to the, the unit wrap system, and uh, we went from ha averaging 18% protein in our silo to being at exceeding 27% with the unit wrap. Wow. Uh, but besides that, you know, just the, the quality of feed, you know, our, our feed value went from uh, in the 120s uh, to now we're uh, in the 200s. Uh, we're just really pleased with the the system, the whole Unirap system. And, and moisture is always important. They've been talking about that in our pre-meetings and, and during the show as well, Greg. One final question. I, I think moisture, you, you notice a difference there, and that also alludes to quality. Yeah, the moisture. You know, we try to, to bail uh, in the 55%. You know, sometimes... That may fluctuate, and we might be at 45%. We failed even 79% hay. I mean, you know, weather used to be a problem, whether it was dri with dry hay or, or even with chopping haylage in our silo. But now we failed when it's been sprinkling rain. Mr. Friedersdorf, he's been sitting right there beside me in the cab when it's been sprinkling rain, and we're wrapping bales. Um, but the, the moisture, to be able to not have that worry about uh, getting the hay baled at the right moisture, uh, it's been a huge plus for us. And, and Speaking of which, the feed quality, uh, you know, the cows, they don't stay, you know, they don't stay away from it. They may shy away from a certain dry bell or haylage in a silo, but you put a bell through a Unirap system and get that proper fermentation, uh, the cows dive right into it. So we're, it was the best decision we've made on our dairy farm, and uh, uh, it's made a huge improvement to our quality of feed, and, and milk production has shown from that. Well, Greg, thanks for joining us tonight. We appreciate the time, and uh, best of luck there. Another great season, hopefully, for you in Indiana. Look forward to it. Thanks for having thank, me on. Thank you, Greg. Thank you, thank Greg. You. Uh, you never get tired, uh, David, of hearing from customers like that. I mean, that's a great testimonial, that, and, and, you know, you've seen it. You've been out there with him, uh, obviously, it sounds like. And, but that's what it's all about, really, treating really your is. customers and getting that kind of response. It really is. And, I, and here at Kloss, we, 
we, we have a, a lot of personnel that do that same thing. Sure. We're part of their operations. We, we want to be involved and do what they're uh, needing to do to improve their operations and working with them. So it's been great. Let's go back to the, the balers and the round balers. Did we, did we complete our conversation there, Matt? Yeah, uh, I think so. I think it's time to move on to square balers. Let's do square balers <laughs> then, all right? I love square balers because of the capacity of our quadrant range. So with that quadrant range we have um, in our 3x3 three three lineup, it's a 31 and a half by 27 and a half. We also have a 27 and a half by 48 inches and then a true 3x4 at uh, 35 and a half by 48 inches. With that, those balers, they can come with uh, roto-cut or roto-feed. We don't do a feed rake in our, in our quadrant range because we want maximum capacity out of our balers. With that, with that roto-cut, you can get that with a 16 knife on the 2100, a 25 knife with the, the other models, or what we just introduced, new for 2015, a 51 knife uh, fine cut. So for the guys that are doing straw for poultry barns and stuff like that, they can get that 51 knife system. And that's where the dealer comes in as well. They, they walk through all of these things you're talking about tonight, yeah. step by step, and uh, uh, equipment by equipment, I guess, if you will, to, yeah. to find out what's gonna work for them. So with the, with the quadrant range too, um, the big goal of quadrant square baler design was to make it simple. Because we listen to the customers and they feel square balers, big square balers are very complicated. So the goal with our square baler is to make it simple. Mm -hmm. And starting right from the pickup with a roller crop press, you know, simply pulling that crop through, and then you see that feeding auger that just really feeds that uh, rotor system really well. And then with the rotor cut, you know, it's feeding that crop into our pre-chamber. And as the animation shows, it can chop it up to different lengths as well. And you can, you can choose on the side there how many knives you want up. So if you're just doing some dry hay, and want it chopped up because as, as some university studies have shown that it'll reduce the amount of waste and, and a ring feeder, you can do that. And with this also showing as the spring-loaded knives and the drop-down floor. So the system will know if the rotor plugs because you put in a big rock or, or hmm. log yeah. and it'll just drop it out and uh, get back to bailing again. With the pre-chamber, what's unique to Kloss is we actually monitor the top and bottom of our pre-chamber for our flake size on the 3300, which gives us the best um, bale density because we can really see and, and get that density out mm -hmm. of it. We have another caller on the line here, one of our uh, customers. This is again from Indiana, uh, David. This is Cameron Churchill from Indiana. Cameron, are you on the phone with us? Yes, sir, I'm here. Very good, what part of Indiana now are we talking to? I'm from Southern Indiana, west of Louisville, Kentucky, uh, short drive. All right. And talk about the operation so our viewers kind of have an idea uh, what kind of equipment you have and why you use it. What's your, what do you, what's your operation consist of? We have a cow-calf operation. Uh, we, we run a cow-calf cow -calf operation. We run uh, uh, our feeder calves up to about 650 or 700 pounds. We background them. And uh, it's, a, it's where uh, our equipment, we use... Uh, I like to have a Floss Disco 3450 mower. It's a three-point hitch mower. It's 11-foot cut. Uh, I'm using my second one. It's been a very good machine. Uh, the first one I used it, I just seemed like I was never going to wear it out. And I, the cattle prices were good. I just decided it was time to move to another new one. Uh, as far as the tenders, I have a new Volto 900T tenter. Well, it was new last year. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's an eight-basket tenter that uh, I am just tickled to death with it. As far as uh, I know, uh, I think Todd earlier was talking about uh, hay and so on. We had some trouble last year. I hit the weather wrong living near the, the Ohio Valley here, and I had some uh, red clover and orchard grass got rained on for over a week. And it just pounded this hay down into the ground, and the grass was growing up six, seven inches above it when I finally was able to get out there with the tedder. And I thought it's not going to pick it up. And, of course, the quality of the, of the grass and the clover was gone down quite a bit. But I was able to fluff it up, pick it up out of the other grass, out of the green grass that was already growing, mm. pick it up, and in a few hours rake it and bale it. And actually, I've been impressed. I'm feeding some of it right now, and I've not seen a whole lot of difference in it in the quality of some of the other hay that was not rained on. It, still is, it's, it really dried it down. The, those tedders do an amazing job of picking up the hay and fluffing it. 
and getting a good even dry down. And that, that is a, I've had other tetras over the years, and I've had trouble with them. They would dig into the ground. They would, uh, they would pick up dirt. They would also skip a leave it on the ground. This, uh, this tetra does a better job of fluffing, standing it up. Therefore, the rake does a better job of raking the hay. And then we can go on then with our, uh, we have um, cloth round balers. We've got a, a 160 and a 260 round baler. That's, that's the six chamber balers. And um, they, they also um, have a lot of capacity. I bought my first cloth baler in 97, and I've never looked back since. I was having trouble with a belt baler, and I was going out a couple times a week having belts worked on, gearboxes were giving me trouble, and my, my dealer and the mechanic there said, if you just try cloth, I can tell you your troubles will be just almost non-existent. And I just, in the summertime, I seldom see my dealer. Same dealer is what I had their belt baler from. And I just, I'm not in there in the summer. I don't have any problems. The cloth equipment is so reliable that I just, uh, I have been very impressed. And when I go to resale, the resale value is good. And I've had people come as far as where Matt is up in Wisconsin, or a corner of Wisconsin, pick up one of my hay tetters. And uh, people will, if you have good quality equipment, People will come from long and long distances. As long as you take care of it, then they'll pay a good price for it. So your, your resale value in cloths is very good. Uh, but I, I'm impressed with the fixed chamber balers for the reason that, like the cattle business at this time, as we all know, is quite good, and we like to retain our older cows another year or two. And with the fixed chamber baler, it has a soft inner core, and these older cows that the teeth are not very good in, they can uh, we can buy another year or two's time with these cows and keep them around. When we all would hold on to our cows longer with the, cat, with the prices they are right now, yeah. uh, that's one thing about the, uh, the fixed chamber baler. But uh, I just overall, I'm impressed with <laughs> all of my pieces of cloth equipment. The dealer I... stands behind me; uh, they they know what they're doing. I had a minor problem with a rake or a tether years ago, and uh, I talked to Dave and at, at Dave Fridesdorf at the farm machinery show, and they went back to the drawing board and made some changes on it and sent me out the pieces to my dealer and changed it and modified it, and yeah. it took care of my problem right there. Right. They have always backed me with anything I've done, and uh, I just, I'm just i very impressed with what they offer. Very I'm, good. I'm a firm I'm a firm believer in what they are selling. And the tethers, these new tethers with these smaller <laughs> baskets, they just do a much better job of going over the ground and, uh, and picking up your hay and giving you better quality hay. Well, Cameron, thanks a lot. We appreciate it. Wow, that's a great, great yeah. testimony. We uh, Obviously, you are sold on it, and we're going to appreciate you being with us for these few minutes. We're going to take a break here. We have other callers we want to get to as well. But uh, great testimony there. Again, yes. don't get tired of hearing that kind of words either. No, so we appreciate that. Again, our telephone number for you to give us a call, 877-731-6733. You heard a lot right there from one uh, of their satisfied customers. We're going to hear from you coming up right after this. Welcome back to Real America Live. I'm Mark Oppel. Thank you so much for joining us. It's been a fast hour. It always is when our friends from Kloss stop by. And uh, from our callers, you can tell a lot of customers out there, durability, uh, standability, and all those kind of things. But one of the things, that, Matt, you said I want to make sure we cover, Mark, is the heavy-duty baler. A lot of questions about uh, corn stalks uh, and baling that. Yep, so with our Quadrant 3300, we actually have now made standard on our baler cornstalk kit. So underneath the pre-chamber, it allows the dirt to, to fall out of the pre-chamber. Um, so you get cleaner corn stalks. We've also have modifications standard now on the, on the plunger for corn stalks. And through our cloth twine, we actually offer corn stalk twine only. Ah. So for those corn stalks, because we know how abrasive they are and stuff, as well as you see in, in the videos here, miscanthus, that's, you know, these energy crops are exploding. <laughs> And this is just another way that we're listening to the market and bringing what they want. Very good. And with that, we're going to go back to our callers, get a couple more in here if we can. Stephen from Wisconsin, been holding on. Stephen, thanks for doing that. How can we help you tonight? I'm wondering if you have to have an open or closed hydraulic system to run your balers. Your we can big do balers. Thank uh, you. So on all of our balers, we can do both. Uh, if it's a quadrant or the uni wrap, there's actually a constant pressure screw. You turn one way for open center and the other way for closed center. The owner's manual will uh, give you that detail, plus uh, the dealers are, are quite trained on that as well. 
Very good. Thanks for the call, Stephen. Again, if you would like to join the conversation, we have a line open now. Stephen uh, leaving us uh, means a line for you, 877-731-6733 for our time remaining. Let's go back before we get another caller on the line there about those heavy-duty balers. What are some of the other questions you might be getting, people that want to do corn stalks or whatever it might be, the grasses? You know, we get a lot of questions even on silage, and, and as we talk about, you know, silage is king at cloths, we can... We can do the worst. That's for me as a product guy. That's when I get excited. Is when no one else can go with the cloth equipment. We can go right out there, whether it's raining or or na the nastiest crops. That's that's the, the fun. What about uh, baling in a day? Uh, we talked about that in our meeting. That was kind of interesting. It kind of talks also about how cloth has answered those those people who need to get things done in a hurry. Yep, so with hay in the day, it's a concept where you go out there and mow the crop in the morning and either use your forage harvester or make um, baleage out of it in the evening. When at Kloss, with our mowers, we have full width conditioning, so we have the widest uh, crop being laid down on the, on the ground so that that crop can really see the sun and go through that respiration process really quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, if it's a cloudy day, you might use a tether, but then that, that evening, because uh, that stuff will dry down faster than even running it through the conditioner. And we talked, you know, we heard a lot about that. I hadn't thought about that as far as the, the uh, not only the moisture, but the quality of the hay and the nutritional value that you, that you are part of uh, with, the, with the balers. Yeah, because, you know, if you're baling, it all, baling or chopping it all at the same day, now you're not getting that dew on there, and that dew will, will leach out some of, some of that nutrients out of there as well. Mm -hmm. One more call real quick, if we can get to, to Roger from Georgia, who's called us. Hi, Roger. Hi. What's your question tonight? I need to find out on your four by five balers, what uh, horsepower does it take to pull one of them? So on the Roland uh, 260, that baler will take approximately 80 horsepower. I mean, it just depends on if you're on flat ground or hilly ground. And then the variant 360, takes about 90 or 80 to 90 horsepower without roto cut, 90 to 100 with roto cut. But if you turn down your density on the variant, you can get away with a little less horsepower. But with the variant, you know, it makes a very tight bale and uh, it takes more horsepower the tighter you make the bale. Very good. Roger, thanks for the call. That'll be our last call. The hour has gone fast. We want to leave time for each of you for the closing thoughts here to leave with our viewers. We Covered a lot of ground. You, we would have put you to work here. <laughs> David, you worked hard too, though, let me tell you. <laughs> but uh, we're going to give you a first chance here. At, what do you want to leave with our viewers tonight? Well, I think they did a great job. The call-ins were uh, really interesting mm -hmm. and uh, appreciate their, their comments and, and their, uh, their appreciation for the quality of, of equipment that we have. And I think that one thing I would leave is that uh, we, we still here at Kloss have a family uh, atmosphere. And uh, I think that passes through to not only our dealers, but our customers as well. And I think that uh, uh, that's one of the strong points that we have. Uh, when we look at it in, in these times of maybe tough times when you're hearing a lot of the media talk about tough times in the ag economy, uh, we're really happy to say that we're still growing. And we, uh, we're, we're actually adding, looking for a, not, like a few good men and women or whatever you want to say, yeah. but uh, looking for uh, additional uh, employees and we're, we're growing. And I think that that's uh, in indicative of the, the atmosphere plus the quality of equipment. Just so, real quick, someone that has never used a Kloss piece of equipment, what would you say to that person? I'd say go to your nearest dealer and ask for a demo and because uh, the proof is in seeing one run. Well, we heard that through the words of uh, those callers tonight, uh, most assuredly. Yes. David, thanks for joining us and Thank you hope you'll come your back time. and see us again. Matt, nice job tonight. I'll cover a lot of ground. Uh, yeah. Your final thoughts. So my final thoughts is, you know, being the product guy, going out and doing demos for the last 12 years, you know, my passion is with Kloss. You know, when you go to 36 states or provinces, you know, through, through Kloss and different regions, and you see it always outperform. And, you know, the quality, yeah, we're not the cheapest uh, piece of equipment out there, but uh, from a quality durability standpoint, amazing hearing the, the, some of the phone-in calls on it, but uh, it's a really good company. Uh, we really stand behind the product and uh, 
really enjoy the performance. Very good. Thanks for being with us. Yep. Great, great job tonight. Hope yep. you'll come back and see us again as well, right? Yep. And Thank good you. luck Thank for the you. Wisconsin Badgers <laughs> yeah. and the Indiana or, po or Purdue Boilermakers. Okay. Yeah, we'll get it right here. <laughs> All right. For more, the final word here, last information. Again, visit kloss.com for all the information that we've gone through tonight and a lot more. Thanks for joining us. I'm Mark Oppold. Good night from Rural America's most important network.